uh, in, in John chapter number 14, and, and we've read this many times, so we're going to look at it just a little bit different today. The Bible says in verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Is that read in your Bible? Yes. So this, that's, that means Jesus is speaking. Now, my wife says, you preach every, every scripture, I, and I, I, I do. I'm guilty. But there are some things I can't skip over. So if it says, let not your heart be troubled, you can pray all you want to for God to do that. But when it says, let not, that means that's your choice. So, so you can pray all you want to, to let not your heart be troubled. You have to choose not to let your heart be troubled. That choice is up to you, not up to God. There, God does what we can't do. But he won't do what we can do. In other words, God fights the battles that we can't win. But there are some battles we can win that he wants you to fight. And so he said, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house of many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will receive you unto myself. That where I am, there, there, there rather you may be also. Amen. And where I go, you what? You know. You know where I'm going. And then he also says, and the way. You know. And I love this because he answers the question so that nobody will ever have a doubt. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know <laughs> where you're going. If we don't know where, we're, where you're going, how can we know how to get there? How can we know the way if we don't even know where you're going? Are y'all with me? Yeah. And then Jesus said, listen, I am the way. You got to know that. I am the way. He's not a way. He's not one of the ways. He is what? So then, if he's the way, then the church ought to look the same way. The church ought to look the same way if he is the way. So we can't have a version of Jesus. I want to have Jesus. So, so we have to, we have to uh, behave ourselves according to the way. <laughs> and come on now, church. We want to have it our way. I, I, wanted, I want to do this my way. Not the way, but my way. He says, I'm the only way. So listen, all the other religions, all the other faiths, the only way to get to God is you've got to come through the way. And, and that's not a put down. It's, it's, listen, I'm saying it because I love you. I, I don't hate people that are not Christians. I don't hate people that, that, don't, that don't exercise my same faith. I love you. And because I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. Jesus is the only way to get to God. And there are not, and I know famous people have said this, that there are many paths to God. There's only one way. Unless Jesus was not telling the truth. There's only one way to get to God, and that's through Jesus. 
And when you run into Jesus, your way is going to have to change. And if you're still acting the same way and claiming to be a Christian, then you really don't know the way. It's straight and it's narrow. Amen. Are y'all still with me? I ain't even got to the point yet. He said, if you have known me, you should have known my father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip say, Lord, show us the father and it will satisfy us. Jesus said, have I been so long a time with you? And yet, you have not known me, Philip. He that had seen me had seen the Father. And then how can you say, show us the Father? So Jesus is saying that we are so aligned the image is, is, is so refined, so one, so united, that when you see me, you've seen the Father. Amen. Amen. When you know me, you know the Father. Because there's no variation. Come on, somebody. I mean, our DNA is exactly the same. It is no different. We are one. And so... Pastor, what's the point here? The point here is your point number one. I want to give you some foundational statements. We're only going to have time for three today. The first one is the church is not a building. The church is not a building. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will what? Build my church. Some people hear that and they think about a building. They think about a temple. There are no churches that's going to be raptured. When Jesus comes back, he's not coming back for brick and mortar. He's not coming back for a building. When he comes back, he's coming back for the church. And so the church then is not a building. And there's nothing wrong with beautiful buildings. I mean, let me show you one. Here's, here's a picture right here. This is, uh, this is in Rome. This is the Vatican. This is uh, the beautiful uh, church. I, 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 I listen, you won't find a more elaborate building. You won't find a, a better, uh, quote, unquote, building where people come in to church. This is where the Pope actually delivers his messages. Underneath here is where Peter, is, is, his body is buried. And so when Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, uh, what they did, and, 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 and it, the early church don't look nothing like the church now. When Peter, Peter was the first bishop. And so they were practicing Christianity. They were not worshiping angels. They were not praying to Mary. They, they, were, they were practicing faith the way that it was supposed to. And so Peter's body is buried here. And every time the Pope delivers a message in this sanctuary, uh, he's standing on the rock. <laughs> and really... What Jesus was saying, I'm not going to build a temple on the rock. 
He was saying, I'm going to build people on the rock. In other words, I'm going to build people not on Peter, but on what Peter said. And so he built, the church is built on a word from God, on revelation from God. And so upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so for so long, we've been looking at church as a building or a place that we go. It's a building. It's a place that you go, but that ain't the church. See, I can take two or three of y'all with me, and we can go to Walmart, and we can have church in the parking lot. I don't need a building to have church. I, need, I just need some folk that know how to go and walk the way. Amen. In order to have church. I can have church in my car on the highway, driving the street for it. I can have church with my family. I can have church outside. It don't, the building don't make the church. It's the people that make the church. And God got on me as a young preacher. And we had to move out of a building rapidly. And I, I was in Atlanta. We was at a, a, a conference. And uh, I think it was an evangelist, evangelism conference uh, in Atlanta. And, and I can't really concentrate because I'm going back and forth with this landlord. And they were from Pakistan. This was before 9-11. And they, you know, they have no compassion for Christians. And so very hard to deal with. And I'm praying to God. And I'm saying, God, what am I supposed to do? You know, when you, when you find yourself in situations like that, it's all right to remind God he don't get mad at you because I start blaming God. I say, Lord, if you wouldn't have called me, I could be at work right now. I wouldn't have this burden. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even know these guys. But you called me to do this. And so, God, I need your help out of this one. Where are we going to have church? Because we don't have nowhere to go. Where are we going to have church? And I cried out to the Lord because it was anguish. The Lord said back to me, where is the church? And that's what I was asking him. <laughs> I was asking him that. Where are we going to have church? And he says, where is the church? Changed my whole perspective. Whenever God asks you a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. He wants you to know the answer. He wants you to go and research it. And so when I studied it, the church ain't a building. We're the church. That's who the church is. We are the church. And I went back. Got back to our sanctuary that Sunday morning. We had to move out right after church. We had to move out that Sunday. And I'm like, what do you tell a congregation that has to move out of a building? And I got up and I said, this is what God told me to tell y'all. First of all, if we are a church of God, and if God truly called this church, then he's going he's gonna to provide. God's going to, he's going to protect us. God, I mean, if we really are a church, or, or did pastor just get mad and just come up with a, with a vision? Did he just start something because he needed some more money or extra income on the side? <laughs> you know, and so if this really is a church of God, then God's going to do these things. And I preached that with all of my heart to our congregation, not knowing how it was going to land. And before we could walk off of that property, and I told the church, I said, I don't know where we're going to meet next Sunday. Don't even know where we're going to have Bible study. 
But as soon as God moves, I'll let you know. And now this is, and there's some people in here that can, they can verify. This is a true story. And so, and so when, before we could leave, while we were in the building, packing, Bishop Dickerson and Pastor Sonia, just out of the blue, they said we had to come. They didn't know anything. We hadn't told them anything. They say God would not allow us to go eat without coming by here. And he said, I don't know why I'm doing this. But if y'all need somewhere to have church, y'all can use our entire facility. Before we could leave. Now, I'm going to tell you how much pride I have because it's hard for me to receive. It's just hard for me to receive because I'm thinking about him now. That means you're going to have to prepare your congregation, share space with us. You know, I'm thinking about the hardship that will be on his church. And I, 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 uh, I almost said, thank you, but no thank you. We'll figure out something else. But the Lord says, <laughs> you, you know when, when Job say you, you, you talking like one of the foolish women? And Sister McGill didn't say it, but if she knew what, was, what I was thinking, she would have said, uh, sir, you are thinking like one of the foolish men. Uh, and, and so, but I didn't say it, but I wanted to, but, but I held my tongue and I said, we will, we will take you up on that offer. And God provided. And so we thought our church would not grow because we had church at eight o'clock in the morning. Seven, it was seven o'clock. Woo! We had church at 7 a.m. And I didn't think we was going to make it. So we just started, okay, let's get rid of everything. But the church grew. Having church at 7 o'clock in the morning. And so what I want to tell you is that the church, the church is uh, not a building. But we are the church. Now, the building is important. Housing the vision is important. Having facilities to take care of our uh, children. Uh, is important. Amen. And so the church is not, uh, the church, the building is not the church. Right. The building is the building where the church comes, Amen. where the church meets, Amen. where the church fellowships, where the church is Amen. equipped, where the church is uh, uh, sharpened. Amen. Are y'all all right? Amen. And then your point number two, what the church ought to know, foundational statement, our weapons are not natural. Our weapons are not natural. And Pastor T, I'm going to try my best to get, to get here. But uh, I, guess I just got to take my time. We are so good at teaching and training our children how to do natural things. Um, if you like football, I'm going to put you in camps. We're going to start you out in Pee Wee. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, every time you come home, I'm going I'm to critique some of the things that you did. If we, if we like to dance, if we have a daughter that, that's in dance, we're going to send you to dance school. We're going to go to rehearsal. We're going we're gonna to do all of this natural stuff. Because I'm training you, I'm training you uh, how to compete. Can I say fight? Uh, because now I'm, I'm training you how to fight. I'm also, we're good at tra uh, training our children how to protect themselves. Amen. Uh, they got mace now. They'll spray you with pepper spray. Because I want you to be able to protect yourself. Uh, we have computer software to protect us against 
uh, people trying to steal our stuff, viruses and people trying to tap into our personal secret things, right? right? And so, so we're very good at, at, at training and teaching folk how to fight and how to protect themselves in the natural. Some of us got Glocks right now uh, in concealment. Come on, somebody, and say, if you mess around and roll up on me the wrong way, then I, I know how to deal with that. And so we're good. Come on now. We're good at, at, at fighting, protecting, uh, and being prepared in the natural for natural stuff. But the problem is, the Bible says that our, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not natural. In other words, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but what? Spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. So, so our weapons are not natural, but they are mighty. Second, uh, uh, First Corinthians chapter number, uh, Second Corinthians chapter number ten. Can you say amen? amen. And what does it say? The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are what mighty. Verse four, through the what? The pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And so our weapons are not natural. But that's the only way some Christians know how to fight. And then that's the only way that some Christians are fighting. Um, you're not my enemy. You're not my enemy. How, how, can, how can two people in a church that's saved not stand each other? Because we ain't going to a different heaven. So, so, folk, you can't stand. You better get it right with them now. Because you're going to be around them a long time. So, so, so it, it must be something that I need to correct in myself and not for them to correct in themselves. But we look at each other and fight each other when the enemy is just sitting back saying, y'all are using natural weapons for a spiritual battle. Natural weapons for a spiritual battle. Um, that's why I say, Pastor T, I just need more time. Joshua, go to Joshua uh, chapter number six. Um, Joshua chapter number six. Uh, in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, um, it talks about putting on the whole armor of God. And in, in, in chapter six, uh, yeah, I got a sword in my hand. As a matter of fact, Y'all, can y'all hear that? This is a this is a lightsaber, and and I, I I know how to use it. Amen. And so somebody say, Pastor, where you get there from? I'm gonna tell you. I've been trying to figure out a long time how to get it on up here and preach about it, but. And, 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 and if they turn the lights off, y'all can tell that it's on, that, that, that it's actually lit up. But, but the Bible says that the sword of the Spirit is what? 
the word of God. And so, so, so then I don't fight anymore with these, but I fight with the sword. And the sword that I fight with is going to come out of my mouth. And, and so, so, so I don't care how, how hard or how big the giant is. When you use the sword, then your giant is going to have to fall. Because when he came to Jesus, Jesus did not use any natural weapons. Come on, somebody. When, when, he came, when he came for Jesus, it was nothing natural that he used. As a matter of fact, to defeat, to defeat the enemy uh, on Calvary, he did not call the angels. He, he did not use any kind of natural means of protection. What he did, he just used the word of God. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bleed out redemption. I, I'm, I'm the Lamb of God, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be sacrificed. And, and you can sprinkle my blood on the mercy seat. And, and so what I'll do is I'm going to use my blood to defeat the enemy. Then to show further that I have all power and authority in my hand, I'm going to go into his camp. I'm going to walk into his domain and I'm going to take the keys back that he stole and now I'm going to return back to my father and on the third day, y'all going to see me that I've got victory in my hand. All power, all authority is in my hand. And if you doubt me, put your hand right where they, where, where they pierce my side. Go ahead, look at my hands, go ahead, touch me, and, and, and so you can see it's me. And so what we do, we, we fight with natural weapons and not use it. And see, uh, what, what my wife didn't know, I got up when the storm was raging. And I looked out the window, and I did, she did hear me say, Whew. <laughs> because I'd never seen, uh, the wind woke me up, but I, I had never seen the wind blow that hard. Everything, it wasn't anything falling. Everything was moving at a rapid pace, and you could hear it, not just see it. And so I started speaking. And I, I just started using my weapons. Be because I'm not wrestling right now. Flesh and blood right now can't help me. I'm not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so I start speaking. I start using my voice and using the authority of the word of God. I don't know what happened, but what I can tell you what didn't happen. It's like the big bad wolf blowing and huffing and a puffing, and he kept blowing and blowing, but the house stood still. The house could not fall. I don't know. I, I, I can tell you what didn't happen. My wife and my children were okay. And even though a huge li a limb uh, two or three of them are huge. I, I heard it hit the ground. That's just how heavy it was. Right in front of the window where we sleep. And so I don't know if what I said moved that branch just a few feet or not. Come on, somebody. But I'm willing to take my chances and, and not be silent the next time. Okay, <laughs> so for the next, for the rest of the way, tell somebody the rest of the way. He he, he wrapping up. I promise you. Uh, and so in Joshua chapter number six, I got to get here. Joshua chapter number six. Um, uh, Moses is dead. Joshua has taken over. 
they have crossed over the Jordan. They're now getting ready to go into the promised land. The first city that they are supposed to take is Jericho. And so God sends them to Jericho. And when they get to Jericho, the Bible says in verse 1, Jericho was what? Straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out. None came in. They had been doing damage and word spread. And they were afraid of Israel because of their God. And so they shut up the whole town. And so as it is shut up and it's behind the wall. You can't get through the wall. You can't climb over the wall. There's nothing you can do uh, to, the, to the wall. And the Lord says, I've given Jericho uh, and the king into your hand, and the mighty men uh, into your hands. He said, this is what I want you to do. Interesting. Ain't nothing carnal about this. He said, I want you to take the priest, seven of them, and they shall, verse 4, they shall walk before the ark, seven trumpets, ram horns, and the seventh day you shall come past the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpet. It shall come to pass when they make a long uh, blast, uh, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, I want all the people to shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Now, interesting scene. Here is warfare. This is why it upsets me so much that we, we place, seem to place our hope uh, in man or in a government. Nothing wrong with government, nothing wrong with man, but that ain't where my hope is. That, 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 that's, not, that's not how I fight. Amen. And so, so here's, here's this scene. So, so they, got, they got horns, they got the priests, and they're going to walk around Jericho for seven days. They ain't going to say nothing. Oh, my gosh. They're not saying anything but the priests. <laughs> but the priests are blowing the horn as they walk around one time every day. And so they walk around for six days one time. And they blow, the priests are blowing the horns, but ain't nobody saying nothing. But then on day number seven, I, 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 I just want you to understand, on day number seven, they walked around seven times. And, and, and after the sixth round, uh, they blew the horn. And when they blew the horn, the Lord has said, I want you to shout. And after the horn blew, something came out of the mouths of all the children of Israel. And so when they shouted, the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. And so the shouting represents the stronghold that the enemy has over your life. I just wonder if you'll start using the weapon that's in our warfare and shout down the stronghold that is in your life. The enemy don't want you to know this. He don't want you to practice this. But you've been fighting a natural, a spiritual battle with natural weapons. Ain't nothing natural about that. Nothing natural about this. He's showing us how to fight and how to teach and train our children how to fight. I don't want you 
I, I want you to know how to fight more than I want you to pass a class. I want you to know how to fight a spiritual battle more than I want you to get a college degree. Because you can get a college degree and not know how to fight the, uh, spiritually and still fall by the wayside and be, be prayed for the enemy. And so we're teaching and training our children. That's great. But don't forget to train them and to teach them how to fight a spiritual battle. Because fight one, they will. And so when the enemy comes, I got a Shabbat. I got a Shabbat. You can diagnose me with cancer, I'm still going to praise God. You can lay me off, I'm still going to praise God. May not have the bank account that I want to have, but I'm still going to praise God. Oh, you can talk about me all you want to, but I'm still going to praise God. I ain't where I used to be, but I thank God that I'm better than where I was. I'm still going to praise God. You're not going to take my praise because I know that the enemy don't like praise. Just ask Paul and Silas in a Philippian jail what praising God will do. Everybody got loose. There may be some people on your road don't understand praise. You go ahead and praise for their stronghold because they don't know how to pray. But God's so powerful that when he shows up, what has a hold on you can't hold you no more. What has you locked up can't lock you up no more because God's that kind of God. Come on, church. Can we give him a praise? <laughs> you better... You better. <laughs> Amen. You better. You better use that sword you got. <laughs> 